Have you or someone you know experienced mental health issues such as anxiety or depression? Did you know that computer interactive simulations are currently being used as a form of mental health treatment? That's right, this type of interactive simulation is called virtual reality. Today we will talk about the roles of virtual reality in treating mental health. Hi, my name is Sophia and this is Creative Engineering. First, what is virtual reality? Virtual reality, also called VR, creates an immersive, believable experience that allows the user to explore a virtual world that is being generated by the computer. A head-mounted display creates a stereoscopic 3D effect with stereo sound using some form of input tracking. When you turn your head, the VR world turns with you, creating the illusion of a 3D dimensional world view. Now, let's talk about the history of VR. Does the Google Cardboard sound familiar to you? Google Cardboard was actually the first DIY VR headset that was released in 2014. While we often think of VR as the technology of the future, the first VR invention started way before the debut of the Google Cardboard, which has changed over decades from a big desktop machine into a device as simple as a cardboard framed headset. The first VR machine named Sensorama was created in 1956 by a cinematographer named Morton Heilig. It combined multiple technologies to stimulate all of our senses. There was a combined full 3D video, audio, vibrations, smell, and atmospheric effects such as wind. This was done using scent producers, a vibrating chair, a stereo speaker, and a stereoscopic 3D screen. It was thought to be the cinema of the future. In 1965, Ivan Sutherland, a computer scientist, presented his vision of the ultimate display. The concept was a virtual world viewed through a head-mounted display, which replicated reality so well that the user would not be able to differentiate from actual reality. With this, users were able to interact with objects. His paper is seen as the fundamental blueprint of VR. Soon, VR was integrated into flight simulation and military use. In 1989, NASA started using a VR training simulator for astronauts. This was named Virtual Environment Workstation Project. Then, VR arcade machines named Virtuality were mass-produced for 3D gaming purposes. In the past decades, hundreds of companies have ventured into VR products. Companies such as HTC, Google, Apple, Amazon, Microsoft, Sony, Samsung, and more started developing their own VR headsets. Fast forward to 2020, VR is used for a wide range of purposes, such as elevating our 2D movies into a 3D cinematic experience, video gaming, and virtual work meetings. A lesser known function of VR is that it can actually be used to treat one's psychological well-being. In fact, it has become a technological revolution in mental health care. So how exactly is VR used in mental health therapy? Well, there are various ways in which VR can be used in mental health therapy. Firstly, studies have shown by using VR, patients are able to reduce their level of pain, stress, anxiety before, during, and after medical procedures such as chemotherapy. We as human beings have limited capacity for attention. In order to feel pain, we must attend to a painful stimulus. So when an individual is engaged in an immersive experience, they begin to tune out other stimuli, including their own body's pain signals. By using VR to distract a patient's attention away from the pain and anxiety that is associated with injury or disease, patients have reported to feel less pain and anxiety. Secondly, patients can use VR to enter simulations and confront difficult or traumatic situations that they are feared of while staying at a physically safe place. During the session, patients are guided by a registered psychiatrist through a specific theme of scenarios. Over time, patients be able to deal with their physical and emotional distress by learning to handle their thoughts and feelings. Anxiety and phobia such as PTSD, fear of driving, fear of flying, arachnophobia, agoraphobia, and claustrophobia are disorders in which the effects of VR therapy were studied most frequently. VR provides a huge advantage by allowing for the production of scenarios that are nearly impossible to recreate in real life. VR also allows repeated immediate treatment to be delivered. Based on reports, patients have expressed satisfaction with VR-based therapy and find it more acceptable than traditional approaches. However, it is worth noting that VR can only be used as supportive therapy, but not as a replacement for traditional treatments in treating anxiety and phobias. 
The production of an effective therapeutic VR application requires a huge budget. Therefore, the availability of VR therapy is quite limited, and the market for therapeutic applications are not developing as dynamically as the video game industry. So what is the current advancement in VR therapy in Vancouver? Up to date, you may find a few services in Vancouver already offering VR therapy, such as Epionia Therapeutic VR and Vancouver Anxiety. Typically, an individual will be required to do an assessment to decide if VR is the right treatment for them. If approved, they'll be coached using VR. For example, a doctor may coach an individual through a virtual environment that is challenging for them to overcome in reality. The process helps train the brain when one is faced with similar situations in real life. Additionally, researchers at the University of British Columbia and Simon Fraser University are conducting a study to investigate the effects of virtual reality in the management of chronic pain. As previously mentioned, the level of attention paid to the pain, the emotion associated with it, and past experience all play a role in how pain is interpreted. However, the recently published study states that it still remains unclear whether VR-based applications are effective to assist cancer patients with chronic pain. The study confirms that pain management is highly complex and an individualized process and more research is needed. Now, let's take a look at the statistics for mental health in Canada during the COVID-19 pandemic. During the first phase of the economic reopening in May, a survey was conducted on 3,000 adults over 18 years old in Canada, and 38% of the general population reported experiencing a deterioration in mental health since the onset of the pandemic. This effect was more pronounced in specific groups. 59% of those with a pre-existing mental health condition reported this experience, 48% of those with a disability, and 44% of people living in poverty. Research also shows a significant jump in suicidal thoughts or feelings arising from the pandemic, with 6% of the general population reporting this compared to 2.5% in 2016. Again, the impact is greater on marginalized groups with 18% of those who reported a pre-existing mental health condition identifying suicidal thoughts, 16% of those who identified as Indigenous reported experiencing suicidal thoughts, as well as 14% of people with a disability and 14% of those identifying as LGBTQ+. We as human beings are social creatures. We're naturally drawn towards social interactions and feel most comfortable when we're able to connect and share emotions with others. The effects of quarantine and lockdown have largely impeded our social interactions outside of Zoom calls and our cellular devices. Due to the lack of physical interactions, many of us often feel lonely and isolated. During these devastating times, can VR be the solution in bringing us together while still being physically apart? Currently, VR meeting apps provide a space for remote collaboration. VR meeting rooms are becoming more popular in remote work settings due to its unique user interface, interactive elements, and simple access to importing and displaying documents such as images, spreadsheets, PowerPoints, PDFs, and even 3D objects. In addition, reports have shown that VR gamers are finding unexpected mental health benefits from VR social platforms such as VR chat. VR social platforms such as VR chat is a surreal virtual meeting space that lets people socialize, make friends, attend events, take classes, create art, play games, perform for large crowds, and explore virtual environments, all from the comfort of their own homes. Some have claimed that they have found a community unparalleled by real life and a surprisingly large group of people have come out saying that VR chat has saved their lives as they battle with mental health issues such as anxiety and depression. At this particularly challenging time, perhaps VR can be our beacon of hope in mental health care and for one to find a companionship. What other unconventional ways do you think we can use virtual reality? Let us know in the comment section below. If you're suffering from anxiety, depression, or other mental health issues, we urge you to ask for help. We've linked some local resources in the description below. Thank you for watching this video. If you'd love to learn more with us, please consider liking and subscribing and hit that bell icon to be notified every time we upload a new video. 
Bye, everyone.